Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear viewers and my dear students, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the online, cl online classes of Birgons Government High School. Yes, we are passing a very hard time. You know, an epidemic has grasped all the world and you can't come to school and you are away from school. But your study can't stop. That's why, by the initiative of the government and the school authority, we are here to present your class at your home. We, the teachers of this institution, are trying our best to help you in your study in this situation. Now, I am going to take your class and I hope you will watch the class attentively and try to take benefits from it. I am Laila Froza, Assistant Teacher English, Pirgons Pilot Government High School. Today, I will present a class on English second paper of class 9 and 10. Uh, I will discuss an important topic on transformation of sentence. Transformation of sentence. Okay, student, let's start. <clears throat> In your second paper syllabus, it's an important topic. And you know, there are three kinds of sentences according to the structure. Before you know the definition of the sentences, you have to first know two terms, phrase and clause. Okay, I'm trying to make it clear to you. Okay, so, uh, perhaps you have heard the term phrase. Phrase is actually a group of words having no subject or finite verb. If I give an example, it will be clear to you. To work in the morning is a good habit. Look here, to work in the morning. Before the comma, these is a group of words. Here are some words, but in this group, you will find no subject or no finite verb. On the other part, here is the finite verb. So, to work in the morning is a phrase and it works like the subject of the sentence. It is the subject of the sentence. The total phrase is act like a noun. Again, reading newspaper is a good habit. Again, reading newspaper, this is a phrase, is a good habit. And here is verb, you can say reading is a verb, but it's non-finite verb, not a finite verb. Now, the term clause. Clause is a group of words having a subject and a finite verb. And it acts like a sentence. Uh, as a, uh, it acts like a sentence and part of a sentence. Uh, if I give an example, it will be clear. I do not know when he will come. Here, I do not know. It's a clause. When he will come, it's another clause. And you can see in this part, I do not know. Here is a subject. Here is a finite verb. And again in another clause, he will come, here is a subject and a finite verb. Again another example, the man is poor but he is honest. Here is, the man is poor, man is subject and here is a finite verb. In another clause, 
there is another subject and a finite verb. So you can differentiate between the phrase and clause. Phrase doesn't have any subject or finite verb but a clause has a subject and a finite verb. Okay, now we are ready to go to the classes of sentences. Okay, you already know that sentence according to their structure are of three kinds, simple, complex and compound. Now the definition, what is a simple sentence, which sentences are called simple sentence? Simple sentence is a sentence having only one subject and one finite verb. Look at the example, Rita wants to be a doctor. I saw a flying bird. In this total sentence, Rita wants to be a doctor, there is only one subject, Rita. And one finite verb, wants. And here is another verb, to be. But this is not a finite verb, it's a non-finite verb. So the structure calls it a, it is a simple sentence. Again in another sentence, I saw a flying bird. Here is only one subject and one finite verb. And here is another verb flying, it's a non-finite verb. So, it's also a simple sentence. Now, complex sentence. A sentence containing one principal clause and one or more subordinate clause connected with a subordinating conjunction. Yes, now comes the term clause. It is the combination of two clause connected with a subordinating conjunction. Look at the example. If you work hard, you will shine. Here are two clauses. If you, wo you work hard and you will shine. Two clauses are connected with a conjunction. If. In the second sentence, though he is a he is poor, he is honest. Here he is poor, he is honest. Two clauses. And these two clauses are connected with the conjunction though. So in complex sentence, we must find two subject and two finite verb. Now uh, it will be easy for you if I show you the subordinating conjunction. Which subordinating conjunction will you get in complex sentences? Generally, as, since, because, so that, that, provided that, before, after, till, until, unless, lest, though, although, what, which, when, where, how, whether, this type of relative pronouns, etc are used as the subordinating conjunction in complex sentences. Uh, when you will turn the simple sentence or compound sentence into complex sentence, you have to use these subordinate, subordinating conjunctions. So clear? Now comes compound sentence. Yes, the last one is compound sentence. It's a sentence having more than one principal clause connected by one or more coordinating conjunction. Again here, two clauses and connected with coordinating conjunction. Uh, look at the example. He went to the market and bought a pen. Work hard or you will fail. 
there are two examples. He went to the market, it's a clause. He bought a pen, it's another clause. And these two clauses are connected with the coordinating conjunction and. Again, work hard or you will be, you will fail. Work hard, it's a clause. You will fail, it's another clause. And these two clauses are connected with or. So, here are two clauses and connected with coordinating conjunction, it's a compound sentence. Now, which are used as coordinating conjunction? And, but, or, yet, otherwise, not only, but also, nor, etc. These conjunctions are used as coordinating conjunction and when you will form compound sentence, you have to use these conjunctions. Okay, these were the definition. Uh, I think it is clear to you what is simple, complex and compound sentence. Now, you have to know the rules or the formula, how you can change one sentence into another, how you, you will change the simple sentence to complexes or complex sentence into compound. Before the particular rule, you have to remember a common formula. As you know from the definition, simple sentence has only one subject and one finite verb, then there will be a phrase. When you turn the simple sentence into compound or complexes, you have to make two clauses. So, you will have to turn the phrase into a clause. And again, when you will make a complex or compound sentence, a simple sentence, then you have to turn the clause into a phrase. This is the main formula because in a simple sentence, there can't be two finite verbs. And in complex and compound sentences, there must be two finite verbs. This is the main formula. Okay, learners, now uh, we go to the particular rules. In which situation you will apply which rule? Dear students, you will find a variety of structures of simple sentences and if you turn, want to turn the simple sentence into complex sentence, you have to use different te techniques in different situations. First, we are going to discuss the rules of transforming simple sentence into complex. Simple to complex. Uh, look at one example. In spite of being rich, he is unhappy. Look at its formation. Here, in spite of being rich, he is unhappy. This sentence is a simple sentence. If you find in simple sentence that there is the use of in spite of or despite, the same thing. In case of in spite, you have to use of. In despite, there will be no of. If you find this structure, then how will you turn it into a complex sentence? Uh, look at the example again. In spite of being rich, he is unhappy. If I want to make it complex, I will write, 
दो ही इच रीस ही इज अनहैपी ये ऐसे यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड इन इन स्पाइट ऑफ बीइंग इन प्लेस ऑफ इन स्पाइट ऑफ आई हैव यूज्ड दो आई हैव यूज्ड दो सो इन एनी सेंटेंस इफ यू फाइंड इन स्पाइट ऑफ और डिस्पाइट यू विल हैव टू चेंज इट यू विल टू हैव टू यूज दो इन प्लेस ऑफ इन स्पाइट ऑफ दो ही इज रिच यू इज कॉमा ही इज अनहैपी लुक हेयर इन स्पाइट ऑफ बींग रिच इट वॉज अ फ्रेज बट वेन वी मेक इट ए कम्प्लेक्स सेंटेंस we turn the phrase into a clause because we make a subject and a finite verb though he he is rich it's a clause he is unhappy and i have connected it with a subordinating conjunction though in this way you can turn a sentence of in spite of or despite into a complex sentence using though again another example despite working hard he could not pass now if i want to make it complex i will write though he worked hard he could not pass so in place of despite i have used though yes you may also write although the same thing now you also have to maintain its tense in the second clause you will find in which tense the sentence is written in the first sentence the tense was in present so i used he is rich he is unhappy in the second sentence in the clause the finite verb was in the past tense couldn't so i used the tense the verb in past tense worked working was a non finite verb how when i made it a finite verb i used the right tense it was in the past tense so i used worked though he worked hard he could not pass so when turning a sentence into another you must have to maintain the tense now the main theme we have to remember that the simple sentences that has in spite of or despite we have to use though or although and the main formula you have to turn the phrase into a clause then it will get two clauses and it will be connected with a subordinating conjunction okay now come to the second rule rule 2 uh it's the construction of to plus adjective or verb plus to yes you have seen this type of sentences everywhere i was too tired to move the sum is too hard to solve for me this structure says that it's a simple sentence i was too tired to move because here is only one finite verb and one subject so it's a simple sentence so what will you do if you get this type of simple sentence will the for past formula apply here no here we have to think in another way if we find the use of to and then an adjective or adverb and after that to then in complex sentence we have to use so adjective and that i have written i was so tired that i could not move clear look again i was too tired to move and when i write it as a complex sentence i was so tired that i could not move and again look at the tense there was past tense for in the first sentence was the verb was in the past and so i use could not and you know what is the construction of so plus adjective plus that yes after subject uh, subject you will use verb 
then so then adjective or adverb and after that you have to write that and again you will have to make a clause then there will be subject and you have to use the verb according to the tense could not move another example the sum is too hard to solve for me the sum is so hard that i can't solve it can you find any difference between the two sentences yes there is a difference in the first tense sentence there was no for any object there was not any object used using for but here is a object an object before and there is for that's why i have applied a new formula i this sum is so hard in the first clause i have written the in place of to i have used so then the adjective and after that i have written that and from the second part this me this object that is there was an object this object was in objective form you have to make it in subjective form that means i i can't solve it so if you find any object in this type of sentence you have to take the subject of the second clause from that object okay uh, it's not very hard it's very easy i was too tired to move i was so tired that i could not move and you say there is no difference between the meaning sentence are just transforming their it is a structure but there is no difference between the meaning okay let's go to the another rule rule 3 because of sometimes you will get some sentences where you will find the use of because of because of uh, shows the reason reason of happening something uh, i give an example because of being salty they could not drink the water it's a simple sentence you can identify because it's a phrase because of being salty they could not drink drink the water and why they couldn't drink the water because of being salty now if we want to make it a complex sentence what subordinating conjunction or what formula we will use we can write as the water was salty they could not drink it we have to make two clauses so again think you have to turn, turn the phrase into a clause because of being salty if you turn it into a clause then you will need a subject and definite verb because of being salty what is salty the water so we take the water as its subject and was salty we take a verb was and the second clause is unchanged they could not drink it and these two clauses are connected with the subordinating conjunction as here you can also use since as or since both shows the reason so if you find any sentence starting with because of then you will turn it as a complex 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 sentence using as or since another example because of his laziness laziness he could not shine in life again we will change the phrase into a clause we will select a subject and a finite verb here his is in the you have to you have to turn this sub you made it subject we have to make it make it a subject he so since or as he was lazy he could not shine in life we take a verb and make a clause as or since both can be used he was lazy he could not shine in life 
so when we find because of we will use as or since uh, another thing you will remember if in any phrase you find being being is the non finite form of am is or was where then you have to remember when you have to make a finite verb you have to use am is or or was where i have done the, that as the water was in place of being it was non finite verb i have turned into a finite verb was again here is no being or any other verb i have to turn it the laziness laziness was noun i have to turn it in a in an adjective so sometimes you have to change the parts of speech to make a phrase into a clause so main thing you will remember if you find because of you will have to use since or as to make it a complex one okay so dear learners uh, i would like to finish here for today because there are so many roles so i hope again i will come to you with more rules and again i would like to ever make you aware that you will maintain your hygiene and keep yourself safe neat and clean you wear mask when you go out and wash your hands with soap or sanitize it regularly okay hope to see you again allah hafiz